Honorable Guy Joseph, Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation. Dr. Justin Ram, Director of Economics, Caribbean Development Bank. Um, Justin, I know you are joining us by, um, by a feed virtually. Can you hear us? Yes, good. Okay, good morning, great. everyone. And I also understand Ronald is also joining us also. Um, Mr. Christopher Chu, Engagement Manager for the St. Lucia Social and Economic Labs. Members of the Permandu team. Senior Public Officers. Members of the Project Steering Committee and staff of the Economic Development Division and other invited guests, members of the media, good morning. Today, I am extremely delighted to welcome you to this launch of the St. Lucia Social and Economic Labs. Now, some of you here may be wondering, what is it that we're doing? Are we experimenting on economic and social issues? But I am sure by the end of this press conference, you will have a clearer understanding of what the social, social and economic labs are. Before we actually go into this though, I would like to give you a sense of the journey of how we got to this stage. It all started when I and the Permanent Secretary of Finance attended a Caribbean Leadership and Transformation Forum at, which was hosted by the Caribbean Development Bank in September of 2017. At that conference, a number of issues were raised, and these included one, the issue of low implementation rates for projects and programs across the Caribbean. And there were some startling statistics revealed. The OECS countries had the lowest implementation rate, most of them hovering around 45%. Um, so this was a really, a, a, uh, issue for those countries to address, and the data we had really spanned a very long period of time. And it showed that many of the interventions that we had undertaken were not successful. At that conference, we also heard from Dr. Idris Jala from Permandu in terms of the work that Malaysia had undertaken. Uh, they were in the same similar situation as us and the work that they had done and how it had impacted very favorably on the implementation rates of pro pro projects and programs. We also heard from Sir Michael Barber of Delivery Associates in terms of the work that he had done while he worked in the Prime Minister's office in the United Kingdom. We also heard from the work that both Delivery Associates and Permandu had done across the world, and the success stories that um, they gave us in terms of improving implementation rates of projects and programs. The PS of Finance and myself, we thought this, this was a, a very good idea and a novel approach to integrating the planning and implementation of projects and programs in a more cohesive and structured way. I approached uh, my minister and told him about this approach and that CDB had offered support uh, to allow us to adopt this new methodology. Um, and he had to, we had to actually submit a cabinet paper. I know the minister had some convincing to do to really get cabinet to approve this approach in terms of how we would look at uh, improving the implementation rates of, of our projects and programs. After the approval was given, we, uh, we had uh, discussions with CDB and Dr. Ram and his team, and they were very supportive. And um, we had a retreat, a cabinet retreat, and also a workshop for senior officials in the public and private sector. At that retreat, the cabinet defined the six key priority areas for St. Lucia, and the senior officials and the private sector defined some of the game changes. Of course, cabinet was also, they also gave their ideas on what some of those game changes are. 
The retreat and the workshop were a resounding success and cabinet had no hesitation in approving the continuation to the next phase, which is what we are launching today. And um, to give you some more on this and in terms of uh, the journey and the approach, I would like to ask Dr. Justin Ram of the CDB, who has been a, an enthusiastic supporter of this approach and really uh, is really looking at St. Lucia as, I wouldn't say the guinea pig, but the, the early starter, the pioneer in the Caribbean and to, and to see how this can work for us so that it can be replicated across the Caribbean. So, Justin, if you are there, can I would invite you to say a few words. Great. Okay. Good, good morning, uh, P.S. Dalsu. Um, good morning as well, Minister Mike Joseph, um, Governor from, for the Caribbean Development Bank from St. Lucia. Um, are you hearing me clearly? Hello? Hello? Hi, Justin, we're hearing you. Yes. You can continue. Okay, good. I'm, I'm, I'm getting some feedback. I'm wondering if it could be muted on your end. Or is that? Well, so today actually marks the launch of what we consider to be a pioneering time for the Caribbean development banks for member countries. Uh, St. Lucia being the first country to go ahead and implement what we believe to be an outstanding methodology to improve implementation rates for public sector projects and policies. Now, back in May of this year, under the patronage of the Honorable Prime Minister Alan Chastanet and members of his cabinet, we hosted a cabinet retreat with all of the cabinet ministers and with uh, consultants from Paymandu out of Malaysia um, under the guidance of their head, Sri Idris Jala. Um, to go through with the St. Lucian cabinet, what are the likely priorities for St. Lucia over the next five years or so? Now, coming out of that, as Piers also mentioned, um, the cabinet identified six key areas, three of them economic, and those are tourism, agriculture, and infrastructure and on social issues, healthcare, education, and crime. So coming out of that cabinet retreat, we have a clear mandate as to what are the priorities for St. Lucia over the medium term. The next phase of this process is how do you go about implementing um, projects and policies that would improve outcome in each of those six key areas? And what we did last week um, through the careful guidance of P.S. Dal Su and his team in St. Lucia, we have now approved financing to St. Lucia to support this program. Now, this program will involve, and, and I know you're going to hear more about it soon, but it now involves what's called laboratories, whereby um, key officials from government from the private sector, from civil society, will be gathered together for a few weeks at a time to work on these priority areas to see how these can be implemented and to develop implementation plans. After those implementation plans are, I guess, finalized, or in draft stage, I should say, those plans are taken to the population so the population can see what it is all of the stakeholders that were present in that room have come up with. And so to get public buy-in. So there might be some individuals who say, no, you have got this wrong, or you certainly have got this right. It is to get a population consensus on these implementation plans. Now, after that is done, of course, the government will then 
publish details of the medium term development strategy and the implementation plans that go along with that. And then it's a task of now setting out how do you go about implementing this so that these plans are no longer like the plans that we tend to see in most of our growing member countries, glossy documents, but at the end of the day, they are never implemented. This approach that we are proposing here is meant to now eradicate that particular issue. And it is now a focus on strategic implementation of these plans. That means that we will also be facilitating the setting up of what's called a delivery unit within the center of government. And that delivery unit um, will be employing key individuals who can work with government agencies, who can work with the private sector, who can work with the civil, sec civil, civil society organizations to ensure that uh, these priority implementation plans are implemented on time, and more importantly, that the population is kept abreast of what is happening. So a, a key component of this is greater accountability to, um, to the population from, from government about what they said that they were going to do. Now, I know that P.S. Dalsu and Minister Guy Joseph and uh, the consultants would speak in more detail about this. But just to let me say to you that we at the Caribbean Development Bank are very proud of the work that St. Lucia is doing here. St. Lucia is showing itself to be a pioneer, and we are really hopeful that what comes out of this will be lessons that other, our Bahrain member countries and the rest of the Caribbean can learn from. So once more, I just want to simply say that St. Lucia, um, you are ahead of the game here you are doing what we certainly would like to see all of our other Bahrain member countries do. And so we applaud you for being pioneers and for taking this novel approach, which really has had significant impacts in other parts of the world where it has also been, been implemented. So I thank you very much, P.S. Dalsu. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ram for one outlining the thank you dr ram for outlining the the methodology and the approach of the labs and the delivery units and i would also like to take the opportunity on behalf of the government of st lucia to really thank the caribbean development bank who has really wholeheartedly supported us in this process and um, has made it a reality so once again, thanks again um, to the Caribbean Development Bank for their support. I would now like to invite the Honorable Minister to make some remarks on uh, the approach. He is the lead minister and the champion. I know that he is very much supportive of this initiative and um, really is advocating for an approach that will increase the implementation of projects and programs across the government of St. Lucia. So, Honorable Minister, my pleasure to invite you to the podium. Thank you, Piers. Let me adopt the protocol already established and say a pleasant good morning to all. It's a pleasure to stand here to be identified with a program of this nature. Workshops, seminars, are things that we hear a lot about. And I am happy to see the launch of this program today. I'm happy because it took some convincing to get the cabinet to come out for a full day to come to another workshop because when the question was put to everybody, another workshop, another seminar. But the launch of this special program in St. Lucia, which is focused on two specific areas, the economic side and the social side of our development. 
the labs as we we were introduced to it is one that is interesting and different it is not what we have been used to doing in the past where you just come in and you have documents and somebody makes a presentation maybe i would like to take you through the challenge that we had and how exciting it became towards the end. Because after my colleague ministers, after we attended the Sunday session, though some of them did it reluctantly, by the end of the session, everybody concluded that this was the best seminar and workshop that we had attended because of what we were able to accomplish. Because the selection of the areas was not a choice that I made as Minister for Economic Development or the Prime Minister made as the Prime Minister of the country, but it was a, a joint effort between everybody because of the method that was used. Everybody was put into different groups, and these groups had to come up with the key areas. And then you had to vote. And nobody knew where the other person was voting because each person was given their own voting device to vote. And that is how we came up with the list of areas that we believe would be game changers in St. Lucia. I, we were very happy about the approach specifically because it focused in two key areas, the area of economic growth and development and the area of meeting the social needs of the country. I know of late, even what appears on the social side is now being, can also fit under the economic side. And I will highlight some of that as we go along. Our focus on the labs methodology would be in a couple of phases, and I would allow the persons who are handling the labs to give you greater details of how it is going to work, the timelines, and what we expect to accomplish. But in the medium term, we expect that by 2022, we would have realized what we are discussing here to a great measure. It is always good to set timelines because having a plan and not knowing when it is going to materialize is not the best. The approach that we are taking also is not an approach of one particular government or administration, but it is a country approach. And that is why the lead persons would be the permanent established workers of the government of St. Lucia. And that is why you are such an integral part of what is happening, because we expect this to span across administrations, across governments, and that it becomes, it becomes something that the whole country has buying into. And that is why we know the permanent secretaries were engaged, and also the private sector have been engaged in this process. Because the development of St. Lucia and our future depends on all of us, not just the government, not just the elected parliamentarians, but everyone in general. We are also very happy that the Caribbean Development Bank gave us support from the inception of this program. And I must highlight Dr. Ram, because from the CDB, he was the champion for us in St. Lucia in seeing to it that this program materializes as we are having it today. So from the inception of a grant and the support and, and making it possible to be there, to make it happen, and also in facilitating the process of us getting the loan. 
And I must also thank PS for the hard work and the team within the Ministry of Economic Development because it, it is taxing when you have so many things to do and to pay attention to so many things at the same time. So the delivery units that um, has been set up, and I know that some of them have been meeting with the team, but I also want to highlight that this is an initiative being taken while Pemandu is, is the one of the, well, the lead agency we were dealing with, but the labs is in association with delivery associates who have been very much, who would be involved in that process in taking us through the next stage of the development of this project. Now, this is not just a project, as you heard from Dr. Ram, for a report that will be placed on a shelf in a box or on a computer somewhere. This is a program that is result-oriented, that there are going to be clear measurements. So whether myself as the minister, if I have not met my obligations, it will be highlighted. And every line officer with responsibility we would be able to pinpoint the areas that we have failed if we fail. And we should be able to pinpoint the areas that needs improvement because it is something that involves the whole cabinet. Because when we look at the areas, and I will highlight the six key result areas that we are looking at. I would do like PS and start on the social side, which highlights healthcare, education, and crime. We believe that with the discussions taking place in St. Lucia today, that healthcare is top priority. And see, most recently from the World Bank, it has been clearly indicated that healthcare and education are not just on the social side, but has a direct impact on the ec economic output of any country. And so it can fit either under the social side or under the economic side. Because if you have a healthy nation, the level of productivity is greater. If you have a well educated and equipped workforce, your output is also greater. So this would have a direct impact on the economic side of the equation. So if we were to split it down the middle, I believe this could fall. And so would crime, because crime could impact us very negatively based on our heavy dependence upon the tourism sector. Now, looking at the economic side, tourism being the lead driver of economic growth as identified, then followed by agriculture, and there is a direct correlation between tourism and agriculture. The more, the more tourists you get coming to the country, the better chances of our agricultural sector surviving. Because it means you have more people to feed, you have more people to cater for, so there can be greater production. But it's not just agriculture for the tourism sector, but it is agriculture that is focused on reducing the food import bill in St. Lucia. And to make us more sustainable and more self-dependent when it comes to what we can produce and how we can produce it. So we, we look at these key areas and infrastructure. There are limits to how much we can grow this economy if you do not have proper infrastructure. And you would agree that it's a nightmare being on the roads these days because of the traffic volumes. So how much we can grow as a country is directly related to our capacity 
with infrastructure. So if we do not have sufficient road network, if we cannot produce enough water, then how can we grow this economy the way that we need to grow it? And the reality that faces us is that, as you heard from PS, our level of implementation as a country. For whatever reasons, things take much longer than they should. The lab will help us to identify some of the shortcomings and some of the things we need to do to make us more effective. Now this is not, that, that is why I said it is not a situation of a government, but it is a country approach. Because our limitations at the ports. So take for example, we have entered the cruise season. What happens during that time is that the cargo ships have to wait out there until the cruise ships have left because we are sharing one port for both cargo and cruise tourism. That is a limitation in infrastructure to how much we can develop because it is costing us more to have the ships out there waiting. Most recently, one of the ships had to leave and go to Barbados and discharge the cargo there and then get a smaller vessel. To... So you, you find all of these challenges. So when we speak about a wholesome development, a development that is necessary if we are going to grow sufficiently, given where we are with the economy, and I've said it before, 4% growth will not cut it for us. It's not even going to erase our deficit budget. We need more than that. How are we going to accomplish that as a country? Do we want it to get to a crisis situation where somebody else makes the decisions for us? Or are we going to make the decisions for ourselves today and be determined that we are going to make our country successful. And that is what this team is going to help us to accomplish. They cannot do it for us. The fact of the matter is we will have to do it for ourselves. They can give us a roadmap. They can help us to know how to navigate and what we need to do but the responsibility falls squarely on us as a people. And I know we have the capacity and the capability. So with what Delivery Associates and Permandu would be doing for us, would just be helping us. It is how we receive it and what we decide to do with it that will count in the end. So, I would like to announce the call for the private sector possibly to, ex to submit expressions of interest for projects in two key result areas in the economic sector, namely tourism and agriculture. We would request that these companies to submit the expressions of interest to undertake projects and investments in the following areas. In tourism, we can consider international hotel brands interested in investing in St. Lucia, the cruise operators looking to make St. Lucia a home port, health and wellness tourism, village tourism, ecotourism, all of these are areas that the private sector can play a lead role in assisting in growing the economy. In the agricultural sector, we have production of food as a means of import substitution. And over the years, we've spoken about buy local. But as a government, we have failed to take the lead in doing so. And I've said it, we have enough furniture manufacturers in St. Lucia. I would like to sit behind a desk in my office that is made in St. Lucia. 
I would like to sit on a chair that is made in St. Lucia. Because it is not just the food import bill that we need to reduce. We need to reduce the overall import bill. And see how much more we can produce locally. And unless we are going to take the lead as government, the procurement officers, the various leaders in the ministries, we are not going to get the rest of the country to buy in because we are not leading by example. So it is something for us to consider moving forward. What is going to be our approach towards supporting local? So when we talk about production of food as a means of import substitution, I want to extend it to other areas because of the positive impact these decisions would have on the economy overall. I've said to the department, what type of house should I build as Minister of Housing that is going to have the greatest impact on the local economy? What materials should we use to build a house? And if we can identify these, and even if it costs more, then the government should offer a subsidy or the government should give concessions to offset the price so that you can use more of your local products in the construction sector. That is how we build our economy. So we have that then under the agricultural sector, we have the food processing projects. We have production of high value, high yield crops that encourage crop diversification. We have seen the vulnerability of our banana sector. A storm that did not even qualify us to get the insurance payments devastated the banana sector. I have to compliment our farmers because of their resilience, because the day after the storm, they were back on the fields replanting and chopping and doing what is necessary. But we also, we, for, from the time I was a child growing up, I've been hearing about diversification. And we are in 2018 and we are still speaking about diversification. And we have not seen the impact that we need to see. While there have been some level of diversification, not to the extent that we should have had as of today. And production of sample crops. So these are areas that the private sector can engage with the government and see what can be done in helping us in these sectors of the economy. And I am I am sure that the, the addresses that is to be given will be given and the, the agencies to be contacted with submissions would be done. But I want to assure the team that is present here with us today from Pemandu and from um, Delivery Associates that we are committed to this project. I want to assure Dr. Ram and the CDB that the resources being put towards this will not go in vain. We are determined to bring our level up in terms of implementation. We are determined to turn around the economy of this country and to make ourselves more productive. We are not the only ones. Other people, they are doing it. We can do it for ourselves as a country. And so I encourage all the participants across ministries involved in this project not to treat it as just another set of workshops and seminars to go on your resume, but to make it something that is going to bring us the desired results that we are looking for that we all can be proud of the work that we would have done for the future of this country. I thank you.
Thank you, Minister, for sharing your thoughts on some of the critical economic and social issues affecting St. Lucia, especially within the, the key priority areas that have been identified. As you indicated, we don't want to see this as just another workshop. And leadership will be critical to make this initiative a resounding success. And I know as the lead minister and the champion at the policy level, we can count on you to really help us navigate any roadblocks that we may get along our journey in making this new methodology and approach a success. As you indicated, St. Lucia's economic growth rates over the last 10, 15 years have been really suboptimal. And we need to really accelerate the rate of economic growth if we are to achieve inclusive and sustainable development by 2020 and help to reduce uh, poverty, increase employment, and the standard of living. So this initiative, we're really counting on it to be a resounding success. And part of the approach, as the minister highlighted, is that we really want to encourage the private sector to participate in the initiative and to have a, an economy that is led by the private sector and the government being the enabler. Too often we hear in small island economies that the public sector is the engine of growth. We need to change that paradigm and to really in, get and encourage and promote the private sector to be the, the lead sector in the economy, to invest and to grow the economy. So this is going to take a lot of commitment from all of us here. And as the minister said, it's not something that we can have Herman do and delivery associates. They are helping us, but we have to take ownership and really make this happen. So we're counting on you here, uh, the focal points, the members of the project steering committee, to really make this, um, this, pro this project a reality uh, and a success. At this point also, I really want to thank the economic development team who've really been committed to making this uh, a success, and in particular to highlight three individuals who have worked along with me, um, Nadia, Kerry, and Skeeter. I know we've had some um, eight o'clock meetings in the morning, when it was eight o'clock in Malaysia, and sometimes when we were, I was out, I was having meetings at like 10 o'clock in Bali, or uh, just to, uh, because of the big t time difference, but we had to really stick to it to ensure that we could make this project um, a reality. Um, at this point, I would like to call on Mr. Christopher Chu, the Engagement Manager for the St. Lucia Social and Economic Labs, to give you some more information on the, the labs and the process and the timelines. Chris? Thank you and good morning. Um, to Honorable Mister, Minister uh, Guy Joseph, Permanent Secretary Philip Delsu, um, Dr. Justin Ram from Caribbean Development Bank, um, as well as members of the Government of St. Lucia and the members of the press. Good morning and on behalf of Pomando Associates and Delivery Associates, we would like to thank the Government of St. Lucia for your warm hospitality in receiving us and your high level of commitment in executing and successfully commencing the St. Lucia Social and Economic Labs. My name is Chris Chu. I'm the engagement manager representing Pomandu Associates. Um, we are a global management consulting firm um, which specializes in public sector transformation, business turnaround, and strategic communications. And our organization has worked with the highest levels of government and top executives all over the world to deliver on their national agenda and business objectives in a sustainable and inclusive manner. Here in St. Lucia, we're delighted to work together with Delivery Associates and the government of St. Lucia to implement this important reform agenda over the next 15 months. This 15-month period will comprise of two phases. 
Phase one will be the development phase, or what we have termed the lab methodology, which will, I will explain in a short moment. And phase two will comprise of the implementation phase, uh, which will commence next year. So I would just like to explain a little bit around the lab methodology. The lab methodology is a radical and dynamic methodology that has been deployed all over the world in countries in Asia, Africa, the Middle East, Eastern Europe, and today, the Caribbean. It is a methodology that focuses on refining and translating strategic intent into measurable, quantifiable targets with detailed implementation programs, clear budget requirements, and clear governance structures. So here in St. Lucia, this lab will take place over the next seven weeks, commencing this week in three stages. Stage one is what we would term the preparation stage or the pre-lab stage. During this stage, the project team will work with stakeholders to validate and analyze data, conduct interviews, conduct site visits, and ultimately set the visions and goals for each of the six key results areas. In addition, as announced by Minister Joseph, the government of St. Lucia is calling for submissions of expressions of interest for projects from the private sector under the tourism and agriculture key result areas. Therefore, during this preparation stage, the project team will assess and prioritize these projects through a rigorous filtering process and identify the project owners that will be invited into the next stage. The next stage is what we term the focus group stage. And this stage commences on the 20th of November. Over a period of two weeks, the focus groups will involve intense discussions and workshops with all stakeholders involved in various programs, initiatives, and projects in each of the six key result areas. During this phase, project owners who have been identified will be invited to come and present their business ideas and their projects. In this stage, relevant government stakeholders will also be present to unblock and remove any obstacles that are hindering these project owners from a smooth and effective implementation. The focus group will, stage will also assess the impact of each and every project. For social sectors, programs and initiatives identified will be assessed against the impact that they contribute towards delivering on social outcomes. For economic sectors, assessments will be made in terms of contribution to GDP growth, job creation, and investments. The final stage of this process is what we would term the lab stage. And during this stage, stakeholders from all the key result areas will detail out implementation plans for the projects that have been already identified. These implementation plans include budget requirements, government structures, any policy amendments that will need to be made, and so on and so forth. Key performance indicators will also be developed for each project and initiative so that every project um, that is established will achieve the goals set out for the overall key result area. Also during this stage, Details for the establishment of a delivery unit will be finalized, including the structure, roles and responsibilities, manpower requirements, and other aspects. Finally, this stage will culminate in a gallery walk session involving the Prime Minister, the Honourable Members of the Cabinet, Permanent Secretaries, and other key stakeholders, with the objective of obtaining final endorsement on the recommendations and providing the mandate to move forward into implementation. To wrap things up, the post-lab phase will commence next year. And during this post-lab phase, the team will work closely with the government of St. Lucia and other stakeholders to finalize the establishment of St. Lucia's delivery unit. In this stage um, of finalizing the governance structure for this delivery unit, processes will include recruiting high-caliber staff, establishing data collection mechanisms, performance dashboards, and all other related monitoring routines. Following this stage, the team will hand over all of these findings to the government of St. Lucia for effective implementation. 
Um, without much further ado, I'd like to pass the time back to uh, P.S. Dalsu for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chris, for outlining the, the lab methodology. As you indicated, you have a pre-lab, the labs, and the post-labs. Hopefully, by the time we get to the post-labs, we'd have established the delivery unit, and we can take it on and continue the process. Um, we do have a very tight time frame within which we are going to be um, implementing this program. We would like to ensure that it's aligned with the budget process and it actually impacts and influences the budget for 2019, 2020. Another very important output of this process will be the development of the, the medium-term development strategy for 2019, 2022, as well as uh, CDB has also indicated that they would want to use the outputs of this process to develop uh, the country strategy paper for St. Lucia for that same period, 2019-2022. So it is um, a very tight window and it's going to really count on us and all of the other agencies who we have met also already to really make this a reality. It's going to require commitment and dedication and um, to ensure that we put the required resources and um, ensure that um, we actually, uh, to, to, to ensure that we actually can con conclude the process by, I think the, the labs is December the 14th. Okay, so at this point, um, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, ask if there are any questions. I know that the press, there are not many of them around, but um, CBS left. Uh, so, uh, but we will um, indicate to the private sector what the email addresses would be to submit their proposals, um, and we will also be um, informing the stakeholders very shortly of the dates for the respective meetings. So, thank you, and um, I'd like to thank the minister for attending and also indicating his strong commitment to this process to the, the Pemandu team led by Chris, who has, I know, been working very um, intensely uh, for the first week that they've been here, the members of the Project Steering Committee, the budget team, I know that we've worked with you, and, uh, the economic, and finally the economic development team, who I know, you know, it's been an... Um, a responsibility, an additional responsibility, but one that I believe will be well worth it and help to improve the overall process by which our uh, department work program is actually being run. So thank you all for attending.